Hey, what's up you guys? You see a lot of people don't know the difference between what it's called a brokerage firm and a bank. And a lot of people think that it's the exact same thing, but unfortunately there are many, many differences between those two. Let's jump right in guys. Now this might sound a little bit elementary, but what is a bank? You see, a bank is like banks like Chase, Bank of America, Wells Fargo, City. These are all different financial institutions that we can go put our money in. Now usually when you go to these banks, they usually offer things like a checking account. Mm. What was that? Maybe a savings account, a money market account, a CD, um, possibly like personal loans and credit cards. You see, that is what normally, those are the products and services that the majority of banks offer. But now if you go to an investment firm, like for example, Fidelity, TD Ameritrade, Charles Schwab, Morgan Stanley, all of these other financial institutions, those are called brokerage houses or investment firms. You see, at those institutions, you can open up things like IRAs, Roth IRAs, 401ks, 403bs. All right, Brandy, Heather, Channing, Brianna, Amber, Sabrina, Melody, Dakota. Brokerage accounts, trust accounts, 529s, UGMAs, UTMAs. You can put your money into a bunch of different forms of account. Now, the benefit of having money sitting inside a bank, for example, is that it helps you pay bills, right? So the money in a bank, the money that's sitting in there, you can use it to pay your credit card bills, to pay your cell phone bill, your internet bill. So it gives you a lot of facility in the case that you needed to make payments. Now, the beautiful thing about having money inside an investment account is that you could actually put your money to work. So if you have a Roth IRA or you have an IRA or a brokerage account, you can invest in things like stocks, bonds, mutual funds, ETFs, options, currencies, real estate. You can invest in a bunch of different things. Now, the benefit of this is that all of this money has the potential to grow, but you have to remember there is risk in these types of investments. Then when you have money sitting inside the bank, the great thing is that money sitting inside the bank has no risk at all. But there is one risk which is called inflation risk, meaning that the money sitting in the bank is losing value because of inflation. Now, the other thing that I think a lot of people always ask me is, Sebastian, what happens if Fidelity or TD Ameritrade or Charles Schwab or Morgan Stanley or these investment firms, what happens if they go bankrupt? Because we know that if I have my money sitting inside a bank, we all know that we have something called FDIC, which stands for the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, which protects us up to 250000 if that bank goes under. So the question is, what if this financial institution goes under? What do I have? Well, you see, a lot of people don't know, but you actually have something called SIPC. So SIPC, what it does is it covers you up to half a million dollars. It's 500,000 that they cover, 250,000 of it could be covered in cash, and the other 250,000 could be covered in actually the investments that you hold. So technically, you have a larger percentage of your money is actually protected in case those institutions actually go under. That's great. That's great to give something back like that. Now, the last thing that I want you to just really take away with you is that whenever you have money sitting at the bank, you see, you might go in and look at your bank account and you might see there that you have $1,000 or $10,000 or $100,000 or a million dollars. You might see those numbers there. But the reality is that your bank does not have your money sitting inside an account with a million dollars tied to your name. That's not what they have. They just have your numbers there, your information on a screen. But the reality is your money is being lent out. So your bank is actually using your money that is sitting in the bank. They're using it to lend it to people on credit cards, to buy cars, to buy houses. They're lending your money while they're paying you 0.00001% on a savings account. So this is the reason why banks love having your money sitting inside their accounts because even though you might see that you have a million dollars in there or a hundred thousand dollars in there or 10,000, the reality is your money is being lent out. Whereas when you have an investment account, your funds are actually invested. So if you're buying Apple stock, Google stock, IBM, if you're buying a fund, whatever it is, your money is actually invested. So that means your money's actually growing. So Again, you have to understand the pros and cons of each side. There is nothing wrong with having money in the bank, but the mistake you don't want to make is having too much money in the bank because having too much money in the bank means that your money is losing value because of inflation. And you never want to have too much money sitting in the bank working for the bank. Hey, thanks so much for watching this video. And if you're serious about making better decisions with your money, 
go ahead, follow us, comment, subscribe, and click that notification bell so that you're notified whenever we upload a new video, and we'll see you in the next one. Thanks so much.